Hello and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm Sarah and today I'm here with my neighbor Izzy Provencia. Hello. Thanks for uh, coming down. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, Izzy is uh, a Vermonter. Um, how long has your family lived in Vermont? I'm uh, only fourth generation. Okay, so. only fourth. So, but I have relative. I have part of my family goes back eight. That's I amazing. Can, I can find them in the 1830 census, but they're not. Right. It's like my grandfather, great great grandfather's wife, but mm -hmm. you know. You know, <laughs> we, we try to keep up. Um, <laughs> so, um, so Izzy's uh, lived here for a long time and um, knows about making maple syrup, which is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, so thanks for lending your expertise. You're welcome. And uh, <clears throat> Izzy's dog is outside and is sad that he's not outside. So if you hear a dog howling, there's no cruelty <laughs> being done. We're going to get to the dog after the video is over. Um, but yeah, I thought we'd talk about maple sugaring. And I actually got to go see um, Izzy um, sugar at his friend's um, sugar house a couple of weeks ago. And we'll intersperse some footage while we're talking about the process. So um, I guess the first thing is you tap the trees, right? Yep. There's different, pro different methods or technologies that people have been using over the centuries to do this. Yep, yep. So started off with like a, a, the old days, the old, old, old days, is they started off with like a wood shoot. Uh -huh. Basically, so you take a tree and you carve, uh, you'd carve a piece out and then you would jam it in and okay. then put a, put a bucket, and then it evolved into like the more modern spiles, which is kind of what you kind of think of when you think of a, a maple tap, right? Uh, with wood buckets, with wood buckets, with wood covers, and okay. then it went to English tin, uh huh. And so the spile kind of re re remained the same, and it went to English tin with a cover, and then of course now we're to piping. Right. So, so plastic, plastic lines, which make it a lot easier. Um, and then th th that varies considerably. So we use right. like a, a, a five sixteenths, mm -hmm. or excuse me, a seven sixteenths. Some people use five sixteenths for the mm -hmm. taps. Some people use nubs. Mm -hmm. There's vacuum. It can get super complex. Right. Um, right. And, uh, and so these, I'm sorry, say the word again. Spiles. spiles, yeah. Yeah. Those are the kind of the traditional. Like they have little, little hook. spigots, and they have a hook to hang your bucket right, on. Right. Exactly. So you're literally making a putting a tap, a spigot, in directly into the tree right. to get the sap yeah. to run. And the Indians, I guess, used to. So they say used to like drill a hole in the tree and then just drink the sap. Oh, okay. And that like boiling it down was a kind of European thing. Sure. Kind of. I don't know. Yeah. But I don't know about that. So. Industrializing different processes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, and it's seasonal. It usually starts sap. Usually starts running in February. I know this year yep. is unusual. Yep. Um, so you're out there when it's it's the tail end of winter. It's usually a kind of cold, wet weather. Often you're waiting if you're collecting buckets. You're waiting through you know snow that can be knee deep or more or more <laughs> waist waist yeah. deep in spots this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've had a lot. We had a lot of snowpack this year. So, but I think for Vermonters that do this, it's like spring is finally coming in mm -hmm. sugaring season and yes the weather's nasty but darn it i'm gonna get out there anyway and do something because i'm i've got cabin fever i've been inside all winter and this is like the first yeah good physical activity and getting outside yep and the way i figure it is that um january's the worst month sure february is the shortest month mm -hmm. and february we begin sugaring and by the time we're done sugaring which is usually now mm -hmm. mid to late april mm -hmm. Spring has sprung, right? Yeah, <laughs> and so it's psychologically, you know, it's yeah, it's, mud season sucks. I think it, it's terrible. So you, there's a lot of activities that Vermonters do in mud season, and you have <laughs> to keep yourself entertained. Um, we'll talk about entertainment in the sugar shack. In a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the cycle. This year was really late. We had a long late winter, um, and you need you need certain temperatures for the sap to start running, right? Warm days and cold nights, right? So generally speaking, it all depends. So there's a lot of factors, mm -hmm. wind, mm. snowpack, mm -hmm. uh, sun exposure. So if you have a southern facing sugar bush as opposed to a north facing sugar bush. But generally speaking, the rule of thumb is 28 degrees at night, 40 to 45 during the day. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't always, the wind's blowing hard or there's, it's cloudy or whatever. It, it right. can vary considerably. If there's snowpack around the base of the trees, that has an effect on it too. Uh-huh. And with yeah. our trees, I've learned that don't bother trying to figure it out. Just just, just go see just, if it's yeah, running. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. Our trees are pretty unpredictable. So. Yeah. And so then we talked <clears> about going from the taps to this tubing. So you would have permanent, um, or you would tap the trees. Do you tap them afresh every year anyway? Yep. And then hook up the lines. Yep. 
And then typically your sugar bush is uphill from your sugar house. And so the sap runs down True. through these lines Correct. and directly into your holding tank. Correct. And then you boil your maple syrup off of that. Yep. Yeah. And we used gravity. Okay. So we just, nature, it, it creates a natural vacuum. Mm -hmm. So guys have what are called sap suckers. So mm -hmm. they actually have vacuum that pulls it, which mm -hmm. so they can get more than we can because we're just waiting for Mother Nature to do her thing. Right. And they're taking the initiative. Is, is there any, um, pro, I mean, other than volume of production, obviously, or getting like a faster yield, is there any harm to the tree to do that? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, the rule of thumb is you never tap where above or below an old tap because there's veins okay. in the tree sure so you always kind of move Rotate left or right around. but um mm -hmm. as far as i can tell i've never i mean i've seen we have maple trees that are well over 100 years old and they clearly have been tapped many many times and mm -hmm. and i haven't they still produce yeah and I each tree's different yeah but, yeah sure i love it in some of the restaurants around here you can go in and they'll have like a side table or something that's a slice of an old maple tree that had to come down and you can see all the tap marks yeah. all the infiltrations and that's like super angles. trendy right now yeah. yeah which is really interesting because like even 10 years ago that's junk mm -hmm. and nowadays people think it, which it is cool it's cool to yeah look it's at, the history of the tree yeah yeah exactly yeah, that's really cool let's taste um i don't want to over sugar us so let's taste some maple syrup <laughs> while we're talking um i guess we'll start with this is this year's yield from the sugar house where we had our little tour so let's try this one doesn't smell good, huh? Mm. Delightful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm biased. It's thick. Really coats your tongue. Definitely sweet. But I've got a lot of that caramel, that kind of candy mm -hmm. flavor. And I think that's because we do not have a, an RO, which mm -hmm. is a reverse osmosis. What that right. does is it takes the water out of the sap. Mm -hmm. So it, it raises the sugar level, basically, so less time boiling. Mm -hmm. So I'd argue because we boil more, we get more caramelization, more maple flavor. Absolutely. That's, that's my theory, at least. No, I that makes complete sense because I've made candy before from, you know, just cane sugar. Right. And the more you cook it, the more caramel right. you get. Exactly. So it makes exactly. sense with, with maple. Yeah, so let's talk about the actual sugaring process. So you've got it out of the tree into a holding tank. Mm -hmm. And then you you typically would wait and then until that tank's a certain... Yeah, yeah. Before you fire up the fire, because that's a whole process. right. Because that's what we call burning the pans. Which mm -hmm. basically, if the syrup or the syrup gets too hot, it'll turn to candy, uh -huh. and then you burn your pans, and that's that's a really bad day. Right. Um. Uh. So yeah. So the way what we try to do is we try to have at least 150 gallons. 150 gallons will last us. That's probably four hours worth of boiling. Okay. Um. And so the way, do you want me to talk about how the actual system works? Yeah. So definitely. what we have is we have a holding tank out behind the sugar house, and then we have a three-quarter inch copper um, line that comes in and goes through the back pans, and that's a preheater. So when the sap comes in, it's ice cold, mm -hmm. but by the time it hits the float bo box, it is red hot. Preheated, and so, yeah. So the idea is that, of course, it's less time boiling. Mm -hmm. And so then what we have, so as the sap becomes more viscous mm -hmm. as it becomes thicker it travels it mm -hmm. naturally travels so the heavier stuff moves forward so what we'll do is we have a big back pan our back pan is four feet we have a two by six mm -hmm. wood fired evaporator so our back pan is what they call drop flue so there's these little uh fins. flues yeah fins which yeah. basically allow fire to go down the sides mm -hmm. and what that does is creates a, a deeper boil right. and what you've happens? Got more surface area because you've got a exactly. hot fin, and then the the yes. sap is between each of these. Exactly. Yeah. And we also have a blower, which is blowing the fire even hotter uh -huh. to, to expedite that process. Like a bellows, yeah. Yeah, and so then what happens is on the front pan, which is a two by two, that's a flat pan. That's our finishing pan, mm -hmm. and as um, as it becomes more syrup. So obviously we're boiling out the water and it's, and it's becoming right. more sugar, which, mm -hmm. so literally if you boil it down, you get sugar. Right. Yeah, eventually, which probably most people know, but. Crystals, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and so what happens is you have three slots and in each one of those slots, you have different levels of syrup. Mm -hmm. And so the final slot, which is where our thermometer is, is where the final product is. And mm -hmm. of course, water boils at 212 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, syrup is made at 219. Yeah. I think sugar on snow is like, I think it's, I don't know, 222 and like mm -hmm. sugar is 232 or whatever. So we have a temperature gauge and what we do is when that hits seven, so it starts at 
212 and degrees. Boiling point of water. Right, yeah. and then goes to seven, which is 219 degrees. And when that hits there, what we do is we we open mm -hmm. we open the the valve and we open the back pans. What happens is it pushes everything through. Mm -hmm. So that that um that front pan in theory is full of syrup, and maybe the the second section is too. And as we release mm -hmm. the back pan, it pushes the gravity all. of the hot sap or the hot tree sap coming in pushes right. out the maple syrup right and then you watch your thermometer and then yep. you go in to shut it off exactly and so when it drops draw it off you've drawn off the right the syrup. yeah and and it depends you know sometimes we can do a gallon two gallon draw off sometimes mm -hmm. we do a quart it all yep. depends on the sugar content the mm -hmm. what the what was in the pan before or, right you know we talked about reverse osmosis raising the content of the sugar by drawing off water through it the reverse osmosis process, but out of the tree, you're looking at what two percent? Yeah. So, per... so people I've heard of, some guy told me eight percent this year, mm -hmm. which I would have to see that to believe it. I don't, I don't buy That's that. Four times as concentrated. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's one yeah. of those things where, like, was there ice on top? Because what happens is the water freezes and uh -huh. the sugar doesn't. So sometimes if you take it on the bottom, the sugar goes up. It's a little misleading. Right. Okay. Uh, I've heard verified six percent. Yep. Um, which those are super high. So if you so the rule of thumb, it's like the rule of eighty six or something like that. So basically, it's uh, at two percent, mm -hmm. forty gallons of sap for well, technically forty three gallons of sap for one gallon of syrup. Okay. So if you double that, so mm -hmm. if your sugar content's four percent, now it's twenty gallons, mm -hmm. and that increases your efficiency. Uh, sure. But on average, I'd say two two percent is pretty standard. That's right. what we were running most mm -hmm. of the time, two to two point five. Okay. And then with the reverse osmosis, I think I heard your brother tell me that it was about up to 16%. Some people, if you have enough posts, can get up to 26%. Wow. I know people that run at 26%. Yeah. So then you're so. cooking it long, less time because you start with a concentrated sugar solution. And then you're getting less of that caramelization. Exactly. Which but, is what I'd argue makes it taste different. But, yeah. Well, I think it tastes better. But on the other hand, depending on how much energy you spent doing the RO process... It might be more energy efficient to do it that way. Yes, and burning less wood or less. Well, and fuel. we on average boil eight to nine hours when we boil, mm -hmm. um, and so we usually we both are teachers, so we get done school. Yep. Usually mm -hmm. get up there, start the fire around four o'clock, sometimes three o'clock, and we're usually there at midnight. Yeah. And and people with RO are there for three, four hours. You know, right. half the quarter of the time. Yeah. I would argue that why would you want to be out of the sugar house? But right. Because this is it's a communal thing, yes. and I've been to other sugar houses where families take it in shifts. Like somebody will get the fire started mid afternoon, and then they'll take a dinner break, and then you know dad will come in with a case of beer and you know some new recruits, and they'll stoke the fire for a while. Because you have to stoke the fire fairly constantly. It's about every ten minutes, or seven so. to eight minutes. Yeah, it all depends on what you're burning. You know, right. how hot your coals are, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. But generally, mm -hmm. seven to eight minutes. Yeah, so you keep loading logs in. Into the firebox underneath the pans mm -hmm. constantly and monitoring the temperature and somebody's got to be over there, you know, when you're getting close, monitoring that. And then... Right. And you should always <laughs> keep your eye on it because sometimes the gauge isn't right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you're back in your front pan, if the back section of your front pan's getting a little syrupy, sometimes... Maybe there's something with a float valve. Sometimes you have mm -hmm. so you, you have, have something got clogged further up the chain. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you have bubbling. So. It requires constant monitoring. Yeah. At least in our system. I mean, people with all mm -hmm. the fancy stuff like steam away and hoods and all that, they just sit there. But we, we keep busy. Push a button. Man. Yeah. Who wants to it. do that? All yeah, right. right. Let's taste. This is a another local syrup. I'm not exactly sure where it's from. It's I got this at our local co-op. Um, and I can tell you that it is thinner. It's good, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's sweet, and it has mm -hmm. more. It has a more tree characteristic to mm -hmm. me. This has more wood in it. This, I think, has more cooked, yep. candy taste. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yeah, they're both really good. Um, yeah. So then, from there, we're almost done making making maple syrup. So we've got to the point where we are reaching our two nineteen degrees, and we open up the valve and. So we draw off into a, a pan, and what we have is we have filters. Uh -huh. So they're they're cloth filters. Um, the fancier operations have filter presses, which mm -hmm. are much more high tech. Right. But basically, for lack of a better way to describe it, how my, my buddy always describes it, uh, it, you have niter, and mm -hmm. it's essentially sand that comes. Oh, okay. So it's a very fine sand. He describes it as maple tree poop. Mm 
which is, <laughs> that's how he describes it to kids, which, you know, in their minds makes sense. It's kind of an interesting way of thinking about it. Right. So a nighter, it's like, it's black, it's jet black. Mm -hmm. It's like I said, super fine sand. It's, it's mm -hmm. literally, it's found within the tree. It's, mm -hmm. um, and so what we do is we just make sure sometimes depending some runs, there's heavier nighter. Uh -huh. Sometimes there's not. Um, and we just filter it. Filter just that to, out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that must be the chemicals in, I mean, I'm sorry, the minerals. Yep. That's exactly what it is. Because the trees soak up vitamins and minerals mm -hmm. and minerals are, you know, they're heavy, they're metal, they're yep. these components. So yeah, it yep. makes sense that that would be in the sap. Yep. I hadn't thought about that. Yep. So we, you know, and there's days where we have to change the filter every, every draw off. Mm -hmm. There's days where you can get five or six draw offs. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, I don't really know what makes the nighter. Um, I think it's one of those things where it's the same as the saffron. You know, it's going to be the climate. It's going to be what the, right. the tree, what the soil is yep. doing that year. Blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. That's what I figure. Yeah. But then, of course, we can it. So we, mm -hmm. we usually can because we're smaller. So we don't usually get a gallon draw off. So we, and people don't actually really like gallons, believe it or not. They're hard, they're hard to use unless right. you use a lot of maple syrup. Right. Um, what I was told was to put them into smaller glass jars. Jars or plastic jugs are okay and put them in the freezer. Yep. Yeah, and then because the maple syrup doesn't actually freeze, but it does keep it fresh yeah. tasting longer, and then you exactly. can pour some into a smaller container because it will still run even if it's been frozen. Yep, yep, um, and yeah. yeah. And so we do half gallon. Mm -hmm. We do we do quarts. We do a lot of half gallons. We do mm -hmm. some quarts. We do some pints, and okay. then all we do is you know you just go to Welch's, <laughs> buy Welch's the hardware store. Yeah, um, you go you buy the containers, and then we just mm -hmm. fill them to the top, and they have like a, a built-in cover, and because it's hot. When you screw it on, if you turn it on its side and the heat from the syrup creates a seal. And that's, right. And we put stickers on it. We grade them too, which is something we should talk about grading. Oh, yeah. Yes. So there are there is a system of grading. Mm -hmm. um, so so there are, well, there's I guess there's three now. Well, um, there was four. There used to be five. Um, or excuse me, there's three now. There used to be four. And so what mm -hmm. happens is you, have, you buy a grading kit every year. And uh -huh. it has uh, three little bottles and an empty one. And it has the different grades so they're mm -hmm. made i don't know in like january each year right. and what you do is you hold them up into the sun and depending on the color will give you a sense of what the grade is mm -hmm. um yeah so so and they i don't i still go by the old grade right. one we had system, grade so. a grade b and grade c which was commercial grade for right. baking or black kind of thing. Black, <laughs> or making yeah molasses which is not really the same yeah thing, and then but. there's there's fancy and there's right. grade a medium grade a dark Mm -hmm. And B, which is that's the old ones, and now they describe them more in terms of flavor, right? Like rich amber or something yeah. like that. Robust, Robust. Amber. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Sweet. So. We still because we're cheap and we have all the labels from the old one, the old kind. We still use the old labels. Yeah. Well, and so. you guys are just basically sugaring for yourselves, so you yeah, know, you don't have to be in this. The, yeah. the reason that Vermont, my understanding is the reason Vermont changed the way that they label their syrup is to be in line with Canada, which right. also makes a lot of syrup, and we wanted to be able to. Um, compare apples to apples, maple syrup to maple syrup right. in the international maple syrup markets. Um, but, you know, yeah, around here people stay, still say, oh, that's fancy, that's right. that's grade B or, or right. whatever. But, yep. yeah, it's basically lighter, lighter in color, I would say more fluid, sweeter, less flavorful. I would agree. Down and and the reason why it's lighter is because there's less caramelization mm -hmm. because as, usually that it's made out of a higher sugar content. Right. Not always true, though. Right. Sometimes it varies, and I don't. Yeah. Well, and you also told me that some some people don't um, cook their their syrup on wood. Right. But there's a lot of oil fired for they more use commercial. Oil fired for commercial, which is again probably you know speeding up the process thing, or like having to hire less people to stoke fires than yeah. somebody to sit there and push a button and the furnace turns on. It's boring. But <laughs> a you're using fossil fuels. And B, you're not cooking your syrup as long. And C, you're not getting the wood smoke flavor in your maple syrup. So right. I don't think it has and, as much flavor. And in terms of like thinking more environmentally, what we do in terms of our, our sugar wood comes from our sugar bush. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we cut down trees, like an ash tree that's leaning against the maple, mm -hmm. or we thin out our sugar bush in order to allow those maple trees to grow. Right. And then the stuff we cut down, which is like basswood and cherry, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of that where we are in ash, we, that becomes... Yeah. That, that turns yeah. in turn makes maple syrup. So you're managing the forest. You're cutting down invasive species. Like the some of the cherry that grows around here is not native, and it's it mm -hmm. tends to choke out other native species. 
Um, so yeah, you're managing the forest, you're yep. creating a nice environment for the wild animals that live there and all that. Um, speaking of species, we can trace this final syrup. So this one is a little different. My um, neighbor down the street just, he does maybe a gallon, gallon <laughs> and a half just for his family's use. And he usually gives us a small jar um, as a holiday gift. And so this is red maple. So this is a different species than what they use commercially. Um, my understanding is it's not as sweet and it's not as productive. And so it's commercially not as viable, hmm. but it's still very like edible. I've never had it. Syrup. Hmm. It what almost has like a liqueur finish, but or mm -hmm. I mean start and then finishes like a regular maple syrup. I don't know. It's, it's unique. Yeah. It has a, diff a different taste, more minerally. I would say after it kind of goes out of your mouth, mm -hmm. you get that like residual mm -hmm. minerally flavor. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Better than eat Jemima. <laughs> corn syrup. Don't buy corn syrup. <laughs> nope. Although that is what I grew up on, I'm ashamed to say. When yeah. I was a little kid, unlike Izzy's, Izzy has, uh, how old is Harrison? Two? He'll be two in July. Okay, yeah. Izzy's got a little boy who's growing up on maple syrup the right way. Yeah. But my mom waited. I think she waited until I was like six and then tried to give me maple syrup after I'd had corn syrup. And I was like, oh. Yeah, right. Couldn't make it. It has a flavor. I don't well, like it. <laughs> Harrison, we tried to give him pancakes last Saturday. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to eat the pancakes. He just wanted the maple syrup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he literally like pushed the pancakes out of the way and grabbed the jug. So. Yeah. I guess we're happens. raising him right. When you grow up in the sugar house. Yep. Um, and we have to talk about one other sugar house tradition, at least <laughs> <laughs> at least in your sugar house. And as he introduced me, do you want to tell me about the, uh, the, the, the cocktail, the time yeah. cocktail that we so, have? So it's called a hot maple gobbler. And I have to admit, it's not a tradition that we originated so it, mm -hmm. it comes from my so my brother's father-in-law is a maple sugar maker okay. has been you know his father and his grandfather like generations of sugar maker maple so maple makers so they it came from their sugar house but the mm -hmm. hot maple gobbler so what we do is especially when we have guests mm -hmm. is we pour we buy the little they look like red solo cups but they're about yay big um and we pour a shot of wild turkey mm -hmm. whiskey and uh, a shot of hot maple syrup. So usually, not directly off the evaporator because it's a little melt too the cup. hot, right? But <laughs> and damn, melt your tongue. <laughs> but it's got to be hot enough for it. And then we we shoot them. We yeah. you shoot the whiskey and you mm -hmm. chase it with the syrup, and you don't even taste the whiskey. Forget all about the whiskey, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think we went syrup. through three bottles of whiskey this year. Okay. And five boils. Yeah. So that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not all, just not two of us. There's guests. No, no, no. There's yeah, many, yeah. many guest appearances. There, yes. were, there were several guests when I was there, too. Yeah, and yeah. we had, this year we had, so we only boiled five times, and we had mm -hmm. a couple, well, at least once, 22 people in the sugar house. And our sugar house is 16 by 20, so. Yeah. So there's a, and usually when we're boiling, there's a constant flow. Because that's, mm -hmm. to us, that's a huge part of it. It's, right. It's community. It's mm -hmm. family. It's, I mean, it's fun. And we invite our colleagues. We invite yeah. Send mass text out to like, mm -hmm. hey, we're boiling. Yeah. You want to so, come down? Yeah. Do a shift? Yeah. Or at least come tell me a good story while I'm right. sitting here tending this fire. Exactly. Sugar yeah. and sucks if you do it by yourself. Yeah. It's, it's not fun at all. Long hours, lonely. Yeah. yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, I think I do know a couple of guys who like to kind of sugar either just with their buddies or kind of by themselves because it's like my alone time. I don't have to do other right. chores. I'm doing this one important thing and nobody's bothering me. But most people, it's a Social experience. Very much. Yeah. I think, and again, there's no better way to kill mud season. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the smell of that. And mm -hmm. the, yeah. Yep. Being in the hot steam when it's like cold and. Right. Your skin's been dry all season it's, long. It's yeah. not, you know, and it's not, sometimes it's not cold enough to snow. So you get like wintry mix glop outside. Right. Which is the worst. It's really miserable, you know, but you're inside and like boiling next to the. Yeah. It's good. It smells good. Sugar feels good. It's good. Yep. Yeah. It's great. So um, I do encourage you, uh, if you can make it up to Vermont through the mud, in the mud season, and get yourself a tour of a real sugar house, do that, or check in your area. I mean, I, I know people sugar all along the northern part of this country, and certainly all across Canada, if you're in Canada. So. Yeah. And I think usually a, a third or fourth weekend mm -hmm. of March mm -hmm. is open, open house, open sugar house day. So basically, okay. most sugar houses are boiling and you can just show up and 
yeah. hang out and that's and you Check can it out. bounce and go to different sugar houses. Usually right. people have signs up that say, Yeah. Come on in. So it's kinda like fun. open studio weekend here in the fall for the artists. Mm, exactly. Um but exactly. that's really cool. And there are some sugar houses in Vermont that are open year round for tours. They're not um they're not making maple syrup because it's not the season, but you can go and taste their maple syrup and learn about the process. So that's another fun one, especially if you're in the area and you have kids and you want something kind of educational or, you know, fun to do. Um, so we'll link to a couple of places in case you're interested in taking a tour. So thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was yeah. fun. Got to drink some maple syrup. It's always good. It's good because we've also invited Izzy to come over and help us muck the barn. So, you know few calories and some right. sugar to get us going. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have so much enthusiasm if we did it afterwards, <laughs> That's right? That's right. I don't want to drink sugar. I just want to nap. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you.